This is the newest, first and fastest way to light products and characters since Blender 4.0. Since the coming of geometry nodes, it was bound to happen procedural lighting. But before we dive into that, let's first have a look at three ways to light products that always work. So right here, I've got a pretty common lighting setup that's being used not only in product renders, but also in normal lighting and photography. But we are going to use this as the first example of how to make good lighting in Blender. So right here, as you can see, I will move around. It is actually quite an interesting looking scene and you might be like, all right, so what's going on here? But basically what we've got is a three point lighting setup. And I'm going to lead all of this and we're just going to do it over again. Right now we are in a black scene. And the reason why it's entirely black is because I put the world strength to zero. And I always do that because I want full control of my lighting. Because if you have this, it's going to be grayish. I don't like that shit. So I'm going to set it to zero. Shift A, Shift A, mesh. Plane, let's add a plane right underneath our blender. Let's do this in modeling mode. Place it right over there, make it a bit bigger. We also need something on the side. I'm going to make E and Z, bring it right over there. And this part I want to be reflective. Why? Well, I want it to be white. But we're going to get to that later. The first thing we need to add is a area lamp. So I'm going to do that, Shift A, light, area lamp. And I'm also going to explain some of the basics about this. So you actually know what we are doing and why we are doing it. RX, 90. RZ45. We've now got a 45 degree angle of this lighting. GCC to move it on its normal axis. The further the light is, the softer it's going to be. As you can see right here on the blender, it's going to be a bit harder. Right over here, it's going to be a bit softer. You can see it in the shadows as well. Now, the farther you place this, the more you have to crank the light probably. I'm going to set it right over there and give it this nice looking light. Now, this is the basis of the three point lighting setup and this is called a key light. This is basically the light that I have on my face shining right now and it's shining from right over here. Usually in video and cinema, they don't film from the side that is being lit. They lit the other side and they film from that side. And the reason why they do that is because it looks more cinematic when you film from the shadow side. So keep that in mind, that's just a little knowledge fact you can now see in every movie you watch. They don't do it in any other way. So first of all, this is our key light, which means this is our strongest light. And now we also have to add the rim light. I like to do it in that order. So Shift D, GZZ, bring it right over there, RZ 180, and now it's directly opposite to our other light. So it gives us a rim light right over here. I'm going to increase the size of this on the Z scale, just so it covers the entire area. Now GCC, we can play around with this. As you can see, it will change the reflection on our blender. Make this bigger and it will become softer. But I'm going to leave it like this because usually a rim light is supposed to be quite hard. Why? Well, let's turn off the key light and you will be able to see the contours or the edges of the blender or our object, your object, I don't know what you're using. And that will make it stand out from the background. And basically all cinema tries to do is make contrast. So they try to make contrast between colors, such as blue and orange. They try to make contrast between the four and the background by giving some bokeh to the background, for example, so that it's blurry and the foreground is sharp. All things in cinema usually have to do with contrast. Anyway, that's just a little side note. So I'm going to add my key light back in. I'm going to take the area lamp, shift D, X, bring it over on this side, and now I'm going to mirror it, right mouse click, mirror X global, and now it's exactly in the other position, like so. G and X, make sure that it is kinda intersecting in the middle line. And the thing with this light, which is called the fill light, is that we don't want it to be as bright as our key light. The reason for it, well, if it's going to be evenly lit from all sides, it might make a flat image. And as I just said, flatness kills the cinematic effect of it. So what we want to do is go over to the area right over here, and we have size. And we can increase this size and it will make it softer. The larger your light is, the softer the light will become. And that's why in Hollywood movies you will oftentimes see a light that spans across an entire area and it's so big that it's unfathomable basically and financially impossible either way. Anyway, the bigger the light, the softer the light will be. So let's have a look at this. And now you will see that this light is a bit softer. We can also place it a bit more backwards. So let's see if we decrease the size back to one, you can actually see it happening that it becomes a lot harder. And now it's becoming softer. And that's exactly what we want. And now I'm going to dial it back GCZ to move it on its normal axis and bring it backwards until I see something that I kind of like because I want to keep some shadows in this. Maybe right over here and then play around with the power of this. So if you set this to zero, you can see that we have some shadow right over here. I'm just going to fill that up a little bit. There you see, the before and after, you can make it as extreme as you'd like. I like it to be 
more like this. So the key light and the rim light have more of an effect. So this is our three point lighting setup. We have our key light right over here. We can name it accordingly, by the way. We have our fill light right over here, which is supposed to fill up some of the darkest shadows on this side. And now we have a rim light, which separates the foreground from the background some more by placing a light on the back. Now you're probably wondering why does it look like this and why do we have this black background because it doesn't really work out for our product render yet. Well, the reason why we are using this is very simple. I'm going to show you if I enable this plane right over here, which is the usual backdrop we would use. Of course, this would be placed a little bit more upwards and make sure you don't get these hard edges, etc. But just for example, this is the normal backdrop we could use, but there is a way to get some reflections in this without messing up the entire scene. So I'm going to add a plane right over here rx 90 g and y scale it upwards go to the materials and let's first do this one so press new metallic all the way up roughness all the way down and as you can see it is now reflective and it is reflecting this plane so if we remove this it will be entirely black which also has its charms but i'm going to use this plane to make this entirely white so let's remove the principle let's add in an emission Emission in the surface, we have a white backdrop. You can increase this to 1.3, for example. And of course, this also lights a little bit of the blender as well. So if you crank this up too much, you will see that it will enter into the blender entirely. But I'm just going to set it to 1.3 and then it will be pretty fine. Now, there's one problem. We have this reflection right over here and it's from the area lamp and there's really no way to fix that. Just kidding, guys. We can fix it right now because Blender has light linking. So yes, I'm going to select our rim light, which is this one, going over to the object properties tab, go to light linking, press on new, and then I will see which plane is this one, plane 003. So go to the rim light, drag plane 003 right in here, and now this light will only work on this plane. But we want to disable that, so I'm going to click on this button, and now it will work on all the objects except for this plane. And that's the way this works, and now you have a pretty cool looking product visualization render. Now, you can also change the roughness of this to give it a bit more of another reflection. Sometimes you have to crank this power up a little bit of the emission, and also make sure that the emission is entirely committed to this plane, okay? And that's the way you get a white background like this and we can change the reflection, the roughness of this, make sure it's a bit more reflective or a bit less reflective if you want that. Of course, you can change the color of the mission and it will automatically change the color of the entire scene and uh, make it uh, in whatever color you would like. So this is the first lighting setup that we went through. You learned how to make a three-point lighting setup. This is the most standard lighting setup being used in photography, cinema, product animation, you name it. Everybody uses this and it has proven itself through the years. So it always works. Just keep this in mind. This will always help you out. Now, there are two more ways that we can light this product that also look very cool. So I'm going to delete all of this. So it's pretty dark once again and we got to bring in some lights to make this look good so i'm going to bring in a area lamp shift a light area lamp r y 90 make sure that it's set to the side right over here i'm going to increase the power of this by a bit and i will bring it to the exact same other side but how do you know how far it is well you have to set this to 3d cursor shift d take this s x minus one and now it will be exactly opposite to the 3d cursor as this one so we have the exact same distance and there will be no visible changes in the way this lighting works okay so we can increase this if you like i like this so i'm going to increase this as well make it a bit stronger which you can also do let's take both of these lights s and x bring them closer together s and x and bring them further away and what we can do now take this light Shift D, RC, 90. We are still on the 3D cursor, by the way. And this is now in the back. Set it to median point. Get it upwards. Bring it upwards as well. And we can give it some light from the back. Now, of course, what we can do is make this backdrop better because we have some weird looking edges right over there. And the way to fix it once again is light linking. So let's go ahead and bring in a sun lamp, for example. The sun lamp. I barely ever use this. I think it's one of the worst lights to use in the entirety of Blender. I'm going to make this entirely white. Then I will go to the Object Properties tab, Light Linking, New, drag our plane in, plane over here. And now it will only work on our plane and not on the other object because otherwise it would look like this. And now we also have a pretty cool looking backdrop for this image. And what we can also do is select our original plane right over here if you don't think this line looks very appealing. So you can just select it right over there, go over to the Object Properties tab, then go to visibility 
and turn it off in the camera. Go to your favorite program such as DaVinci Resolve or Photoshop and place in a white background and things will look okay as well. Or another option would be to take all our lights and make sure that they only operate on the blender. But I think it's a bit too much work for this tutorial so I'm not going to do that. But you know how light linking works now so you can do it for yourself. So there's only one more setup left to do and afterwards I will show you some more tricks that will improve your lighting in product visualization some more. And I will also show you the new procedural solution that you can use later on in this video. It's going to make it a little bit bigger or smaller. S shift C and then you can only scale it on the X and Y axis. So the final one is going to be pretty simple and then we're going over some extra tricks. Add a light area of course bring it over here RX minus 90 this time. So we're only going to place a backlight. There's two ways to do this by the way. I'm going to bring this down and have it shine on our blender from behind. Now this is not necessarily the best object to do this with because it has glass uh, but this is one of the versions that you can try. Simply crank up the power. This might look pretty cool for what you're doing. So usually as I said in the beginning of this video you film from the shadow side and that's why shots like this also look pretty cinematic. But there's another way to do it. So even with our glass we can make it look cool. RC 45 G and X bring it over to the side. Set it to 3D cursor. Shift D SX minus one, set this to median point, RZ minus 90. And now we have 45 degree angles from both sides. Let's increase the power of this and let's increase the power of that one as well. Of course, you can also place one in the front to fill up some of those shadows if you really like. So let's add another area lamp, RX 90, bring it over towards this side, make it a bit bigger so it's softer, just like I said in the beginning, and give it a small soft light like this. And that's the way to make this third lighting setup. But that's not all. I'm also going to show you some bonus tips that will make you an undeniable force in the 3D space. So let's go ahead and delete these area lamps once again. Add an area lamp right over here. Get it upwards. RX90, RC45. Let's GCC this. Let's increase the strength. Add a plane like this. RX90, RC45. And place it right over here to get a type of shadow. And let's turn the plane off and on. And now you can see that this side will be a little bit more dark than the other side. You can also add another plane. So select this, GXX, place it right over there. And now you get something that looks like this. So if we turn these two off and on. And this is a lighting technique that a lot of people use to block off some light. Now, if you want to make a gradient light, you can also add an area lamp, go to the shader editor, use notes right over here, bring in a gradient, gradient texture, gradient into the strength. Let's decrease the spread to one. And now if we place a color ramp in between, you can decide where the light ends or where it doesn't. Of course, you can increase the size of this and play around with all the values. So if you want to make a gradient yourself, something like this will do the trick. Anyway, so now you've learned three different lighting setups that always work for product visualization. I also showed you how to make a gradient texture and light blocking. And now we're going over to the final part, which is procedural lighting. And this is a product that you can get on Blender Market or Gumroad. So right over here, I will go over to the asset browser, select Geolights Pro, and I've got Geolights Pro right over here. So right here, we've got it in the scene. And in the modifier stack, we have a couple of different options. So we have the emission strength, which increases the light power. And as you can see, we already have our three point lighting setup. So if you move this upwards, you can now rotate it around using this slider. And in this fashion, you can very easily see different lighting setups. That's not the only thing. We can also offset the lights, meaning, zoom this out, we can get a three point lighting setup starting from over there, but also from over there, or maybe over there, or over there. And we can very quickly see which looks the best. Now I increase the emission, of course, by a whole lot. So let's decrease that. It has temperature. So let's say that in the area lamp, so let's remove this for now. Let's say we add an area lamp right over here and we want to change the temperature. You go over to the use notes option, color, black body, and now we change the temperature right over here. But in Geolights Pro, we can simply go to our modifier stack, change the temperature right over here to 7500, for example, and it will be a bit more blue. As I already showed, we can rotate this around using the Z axis. Then we can change different lighting setups like so. Maybe it looks better from this side or that side. We can also change the amount of lights. So maybe we only want two or one, or maybe we want four or five or whatever, how many lights you would like. I'm going to set it to three for now because we are working on three point lighting setups. I also have the light scale. So if the light is too big, you can scale it up or down and they will scale accordingly. 
and bring it inwards like so. Now you might be wondering, uh, okay, so now I've got a white looking ball in my scene. So how do I fix that? Go over to the object properties, go over to ray visibility and disable it from camera and it will be removed. So now you don't have these balls in your scene anymore. And I'm going to turn it back on simply because I want to show you guys how it works. So modifier stack, what we can also do is take the X position and it will move those two away from each other. And it will also move away the Y if we move the Y. Now, if you want two lights on the Y, you have to change the offset like this. And now those two on the Y will move. One thing I added as well is this one. This is a top light and the top light can be used to fill in some shadows from the top. And it's also very often used for hair. So in a movie, you will probably see that the hair is lit from the top as well in order to get some more texture and light in there. And the top light is a very great way to add in some shadows from the top, which otherwise we would not have. We can increase the strength of this naturally. We can change the temperature, 7500. Let's make it the same as the other ones. We can also use the top light scale to make it bigger or smaller. And we can also move it upwards. So right over here, we have the top light height. So we can bring it upwards or place it all the way down to whatever place you would like. And now we've got this setup, very simple, but maybe I like this setup better. RC, rotate it around a bit to get a better edge light. Maybe I want another light in there. And that looks pretty cool as well. Now let's turn it off by object, object properties, ray visibility, camera. And now it will be removed from the vision. Anyway, that's a very easy method to play around with your lighting. If you're anything like me, I used to play around with my area lamps and then you have to select this one. Oh, I want to move it around. Oh, it doesn't really look good. Okay, now I have to select all of those and I'll move them around. And then I have to change the black body in each of these area lamps separately. So I click on the area lamp, make a different temperature. And by the end of the day, I fall asleep. And I figured why not make this in Blender and turn it into a modifier. So now you can just use your lights. You can increase the amount of lights, switch them around real easily. And it also makes sure that you're less emotionally attached to the lighting setup you made because you spent some time on it. But now it really doesn't matter anymore because you can play around with it, click on some buttons and things will look different. And you can get back to the same setup really easily as well. So you've learned how to make three lighting setups that always work for products. And I also showed you the new way, namely the procedural method of lighting. If you're interested in the first, fastest and only procedural lighting setup in Blender available, go to my Gumroad or Blender Market and check it out. And if you want to know more about product animation, check out this video next.